We've been talking about version control and we've talked about how to put your Xcode project onto github.com and we've talked about how to handle tags and it occurred to me that we haven't spoken about one feature that is built into Xcode and that's the way it handles branches. Branches are a vital part of software development and every developer is grateful for branches. But when I started developing, I wasn't really sure what they meant and how to use them to my advantage. And perhaps I can help you out here. Branches are up here under source control. And you've got these branch features in new branch, switch, merge and so forth. This is an Xcode 5.1. It wasn't always that easy in Xcode 4. Branches are really a way for you to develop software without destabilizing it. So the idea is that you may have a brand new feature you're working on, but you're not quite sure if it's going to completely break your app. And if it does, where to go back to to undo those changes that ultimately broke your application. And that's what branches are really good for. By default, you always have one branch when you start a new project and you take that box that says create a local git repository you always have one branch and that's called the master branch and if you look here on source control this is your project name master is the branch you're currently on and that's the one that you're on by default but imagine you've got you're about to embark on a really really scary feature and you're not quite sure where that's going to take you you may want to try something out and find it's not really useful. In that case, you just go back to your master branch and delete that scary feature branch. Or in case it was really useful and it's, it's worked out for you, you go and celebrate and you merge all the changes from that branch back into your master branch, which is now this new stable version. So let's see how we do this here. Before you embark on that venture of scary feature, you can go to source control and say new branch, Xcode will ask you for a name for that branch. I'm going to call it scary feature. You can't use any spaces here, so if you do that, if I'd use a space, Xcode would say, well, that's not a valid name. And the idea is, you know, don't use spaces. Switching working copy. So what Xcode is doing now is it creates the branch for you and automatically switches you to that branch. So if you go back to source control now, you can say that you're now on the scary feature branch. To see how many branches you have, you can go to Configure, and under Branches, you will see what branches are currently available on your local system, as well as on your remote. So the scary feature branch I've only just created, it's not on GitHub, where my remote lives here. If I want to get rid of a branch, I select the branch and hit the little minus sign. I can't do that with scary feature right now because I'm on it, it's the current branch and I don't want to do that, we're going to leave that for a little bit later. See what we can do with branches. I'm going to keep it simple, I'm only going to make changes in this one file here. Uh, I'm going to say this is version 1.2 beta and if I do that the first thing I need to do is obviously commit my changes. When I do that I'm committing them to that new branch, to the scary feature branch. I can also choose to push these changes to the remote, in which case Xcode will create a new branch on the remote for me. I may just go and do that. I may just go and, and create that scary feature branch on my remote. Commit one file and push. Usually you'd have several other files with scary changes and it's really difficult to find where these changes were. Notice what happens here. If I go over to source control and I'm going to switch my branch back to the master branch. Notice that right now I don't see the scary feature branch under local branches because that's the one that I'm currently on. So I can't switch to it. I'm already on there. So I'm going to go and switch back to the master branch. And Xcode shows me the software as it was when I left it. So that's really handy because uh, I still have a working version that doesn't have anything in here. Okay, let's go back to the scary feature branch. I'm going to make a change further up here and maybe in between interface and end. This is just a comment. Obviously, it'll be code, uh, but that's just, we're going to leave that out now. It's, a comment is simple enough to demonstrate. So here we can commit our 
changes, you must always commit changes before switching branches because otherwise the new branch can't override the current directory. And if you try to do that, then Xcode will give you an error message and say, hey, you need to commit your changes first. So let's uh, commit something. Let's push it to the remote as well. And we'll say, brand new feature. It's committed. I've done a lot of testing on this, and I'm quite certain this software is stable, and it's no longer a beta version, and I'm very happy with it. I would like to merge it back into my master branch and hopefully release it very soon. The way I do that is I can do it two ways, really, thanks to Xcode's features. You have the two merge features here, merge from a branch and merge into a branch. It depends really where you're on currently. So right now we're on the scary feature branch. We could say merge it into the master branch. If we were on the master branch and there are some changes on the scary feature branch that we want to bring into the master branch, then we could say merge from the branch. So it's just a matter of where you are. I probably prefer to switch to the master branch first. And notice that the comments are different and we don't have our new feature here. So in this case, I could go to source control, merge from a branch, and I'm going to select that scary feature branch that I'm now bringing into the new version. When I do that, Xcode will bring up usually a whole list of files and you can see which features have changed. And these little flick switches, they let you decide which version you'd like to keep. So on the left-hand side here, I'm on the master branch. And on the right-hand side, I can see what's happened on the scary feature branch. And on the left-hand side, in the code window, I can see what my code is going to look like after the merge. And these little switches let me decide what to do. So if I did not want this line of code on my master branch, I just flick the switch. Well, flick it with this thing here. Then I would keep these new comments, but I wouldn't keep this line. Likewise, when I select this next thing here, I could do the same thing. I could bring in the new feature, but I could leave this part of the code unchanged. And often there's no yes or no position here. Often this is in a state of conflict, and you need to then go through these things and decide what you want to merge and what you don't want to merge to have a working version. In my case, I'd like to merge everything, so I'm just going to leave all the defaults here and say Merge. Xcode will even allow you to create a snapshot of your project beforehand. I found them very helpful in the past, and I'm going to enable them. And now notice I've got my new feature here. I've got the comments from my scary branch as well. But really, if I check this here, I'm on the master branch still. So because I'm really happy now, I can go and take the beta out maybe change this and say, this is now ready for release. And of course, whenever I've made a change, I have to go and commit them and push them to the remote as well. If you decide you no longer need that scary feature branch because you're now working on another feature and this feature is finished, you can go back to configure your project, go back to branches and click that scary feature branch and just hit the minus sign. Xcode will ask you, do you really want to do that? Because now there's no way to go back. And you go and delete them. If there are changes on the branch you want to delete that haven't been merged in, then Xcode will give you a different error message and say, hey, are you really sure? Because you've made changes there and they're not in another branch. Are you really sure you want to delete it? And then you can make that decision. That was it. I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, then please leave me a comment. Share this with friends, family, and complete strangers. And I'll hope to see you soon in the next one.